What's up, folks? My name is Ronald Seaman. Welcome yet to another episode or story or hello, Max. Hello. Hello. By the way, <laughs> he's my new person in my house. And he's called Max. Folks, meet that Max. He's a great dog. Very good dog friendly dog anyway we're here to talk about things like um, actually we're here to challenge status quo <laughs> what is it what dogs we're here to challenge status quo and uh, what we have today onto the topic is something really contentious I always find those contentious things that society chooses never to pay attention to uh, sweep under the rug or just say this is how it was made and this is how it is and this is how it's gonna stay and we're here to challenge all those things challenge them if something is there and it does not make any sense why are you still having that tradition if something is not sensible anymore why are you still keeping that tradition if that thing does not appeal to who you are or what you stand for why are you still paying attention to such a thing i'm asking myself so i always come up and maybe make you snap out of that stupidity or snap out of that stupid trance and maybe we see how we can fix society and the rules terms and regulations around us maybe should start being relevant to us I'll be right back. I'm the son of a gun. Here I am again. I'm the son of a gun and uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, something, as I told you, really contentious and I realized this when I visited our immigration center where they claim citizenship runs on certain terms, rules and regulations of tradition, which traditions according to me do not make any sense at all. He was a man he comes from, Uganda is, let me give you a preamble, Uganda is a heterogeneous nation. We have 63 tribes and 52 dialects. So it is easy for you to find someone, someone's father, uh, uh, paternal side from one side, different tribe, different culture, different tradition, and then the mother coming from a differently different tradition, culture, and, I mean setting and everything. So, we always have a problem when it comes to our citizenship. And I realize that our citizenship runs or is determined by very, very old laws that don't make any sense. He was a man, he comes from one tribe, called the Alur and his mother comes from a tribe called the Ankole tribe but him and his father there's no relationship I think I've made a vlog earlier on and I told and I said this and I stipulated it very well that tradition especially in Uganda says that by default, a child takes tribe of the father. But what relevance does it still have today? What sense does it still have? After us understanding that there are two things that determine fatherhood or parenthood. It's either biology, which is science, or uh, relationship. So... This guy gets up and says, my father comes from this part of the country. But literally, 
I'm not related to him. We do not have a relationship and there's nothing in between me and him. It is just science. But I grew up with my mother who remarried one time. My God, Max is standing on his two. Whatever he's sniffing, I don't know. Who he says that one time uh, I, my mother remarried and then I found this father who I've chosen or who has been there in my life and has even shared a name with me. So I share a name with him. I mean, he's given me a name. And I regard myself more of a Muganda than a Lu. And trust me, he had a big problem. Immigration had a big problem. And they kept telling him that is not how citizenship is determined. You have to take a citizenship or you have to be a citizen of Uganda or regarded or citizenship in Uganda has to regard you uh, a citizen on grounds that you are a son of your father, be it him being around, not being around, having a relationship with him or not having a relationship with him. He is your father, period. Now to me, that's a cheat. I'll be right back. Yes, here I am. So those are the grounds onto which our citizenship, uh, Directorate of Citizenship and Immigration Control determines our citizenship. When your absent father, when your negligent father, who's very good at practicing good anatomy and uh, exercising great anatomy, ejaculating, and after that he goes away and gets oblivious. And that's what the system is saying, no matter how broken it is, no matter how many uh, female uh, promotion or pro-female agencies around are saying people we need to support the girl child we need to to be on the side of the girl child we need to love the girl child we need to empower the girl child i'm asking myself how are you empowering this girl when you are entertaining a man to just come and have science with him and go and after that the child belongs to him regardless of anything, regardless of his being available or not being available. And now here comes also another question. What if a good man turns up? Money is hard to come by these days. But if a generous man turns up and he says, I want to become the father of this child, how, would you, how, how does he get his return on investment? Now I know you can never pay what you invest in love. Love cannot be tangibly liquidated or compensated. But now, you just have to make sure that you reciprocate this love. Show this love back. Now, it baffled me so much. And the funniest thing, it was women who were insisting on saying that is not the father of the man the father of the man is the man the man does not know about the man last saw in 1996 in passing he was told by a friend that that is your father as he was trying to figure out to say how he can approach him nigger disappeared again the next time he had was some time back he passed away and that is his father by virtue of him being around or alive or not alive but the man is telling you i have a present father a man that i say he's the man in my life we all know women and men are reciprocative to love are receptors of love now i ask myself 
how bad it will feel when men get up and choose to be good men and choose to take on the women who have been abandoned by stupid men and they say, I'll have you, I'll take you because I love you and, my chi and your child is going to be my child. And then after 10 years, this man wakes up, wakes up from his slumber or stupidity. He comes and says, that's my child. And the law is also there to back him up and say, that is your child. Let me ask this question to women. Is fatherhood, me having sex with a woman, having an ejaculation and walking away? Or is fatherhood being around, being present? imparting life skills, imparting character and cultivating character into a child. I need women to answer me on this. And maybe that's when we're going to get up, maybe find the solution to this whole predicament or stupidity, because according to me, it is stupidity. Science, even Max, can go and have sex or mate a fellow door, a, 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 a bitch. For those of you who find it offensive, but hey, how's a female door called? It's just called a bitch. So even Max can practice that science in his anatomy. But what makes us different as humans, as men, is being present, is being supportive is being able to impart skills and character. Now I need women to answer me on this. I need women to answer me on this. Because it was women at the Directorate of, Directorate of uh, Citizenship and Immigration Control, Uganda, who were insisting that men from one tribe never produce children from another tribe. But if you want, your progeny to carry on with your tribe. Why are you not there? Why are you not there? If you say you're not able to be there, give reason why you're not able. But you just go oblivious and you expect this child to still belong to you. And poor child does not even have a right to choose for love. This is the person I love. This is the person I have a relationship with. This is the person I regard my father. So, are we just playing some sort of stupid game that sounds good to society? We are defending, we are, we are supporting the girl child, we are empowering the girl child, yet you're still empowering absent men, abusive men, to come and just fuck the living daylights of them, and they go. I'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. It's always a great pleasure speaking to you. I'm the son of a gun, Ronald Seema. For those of you who have not yet subscribed, but hey, managed to stumble here, yeah, it's always a good thing. Uh, just subscribe. Um, I, got a, I got feedback from a young lady the other time that said, you know your topics, they are sometimes too long. And our life, I mean, our, our, our concentration span is really short. I don't make content for people with a short attention span. I don't. And it's a free world. And on YouTube, it's really free. So you go find things that can keep you captivated there for a long time. Because, I mean, on YouTube, you can choose what makes you better and what makes you happy. But as for me, Ronald Seema, I'm imparting sense into society or making them snap out of their stupid transits. <laughs>